Hey, 1001, let's rock and roll. Welcome to the Hammer Down Podcast. And today I have Chris Kilcoin, Senior Manager and Team Lead for CDW here at Fordnet. Chris, good afternoon. How you doing, man? Doing well. Happy Friday. Honored to be a part of this and uh, looking forward to talking about some techs and some tunes. Um, really pumped up about the uh, the opportunity here. Yeah, we're going to put the uh, hammer down today and put the pedal to the metal, talk trends, tech, and tunes. Really appreciate be, appreciate you being on. Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and what you do for us here at Fortinet, how long you've been here, and why we're talking today. 100%. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been in tech for over 15 years. I've uh, been with Fortinet just under two years now. Uh, lead the entire CDW channel team, and uh, we've got a lot of good synergies between both companies, a lot of momentum, a lot of good uh a lot of good opportunity ahead too so it's it makes give you a reason to get up in the morning and start running well yeah i mean that's one of the things uh it's crazy you know you're an early morning let's get some stuff done let's you know shout out of a cannon and let's let's hit it hard um uh, one of the things i want to talk about is uh the trend and how we drive channel business um one of the things is i grew up on the channel side i you know we were you know at cdw i was there 23 years i've been here two and a half um one of the reasons you know we connected about getting on the podcast is the success you and your team are having uh, and the horsepower yep. you guys bring to the relationship. So, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about what is what is the the one of the contributing factors to the success with Fortinet at CDW because we've had significant growth. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the inflection point in the partnership happened in 2021, right? Um, CDW launched professional services. All of a sudden, this rocket ship took off at a whole nother you know speed that we weren't used to. And you're seeing clips of you know high 40% growth one year, 50% growth last year. We're on pace to do probably mid 40s this year, all eclipsed in different sales plateaus that we've stri strived for at the beginning of the year. So we're we're kind of over indexing on what we we shoot together for, but it's no surprise that services piece just opened up more doors. Uh, it opened up new relationships and. You know, it adheres to their company objectives of, you know, solutions based outcomes. You know, they want to help customers from cradle to grave with recommending the right solutions, but they also realize that there's a, a knowledge gap sometimes if they're not used to, say, Fortinet. They need to help them with the education side of getting their team ramped up, help them with the implementation. Um, and we're, we're about to launch some managed services here in the next three to six months. So you got kind of a full, robust engine going after every customer and more importantly, it's just a ton of value to the sellers uh, that a lot of sellers there now have services targets. So, um, you know, overall, we couldn't ask for a better opportunity. And the best part is we're just getting started. So we're, we're just scratching the surface on a lot of our relationships. And with our portfolio breath, too, we can start in one part. And, you know, knowing our 40 OS and, and the power behind the fabric, you can slowly grow out into an annuity stream of just helping customers with their pain points of too many parts, too many products. Let's talk about that consolidation story. Let's converge the, the silos of networking and security. Um, so it's a, honestly the perfect opportunity to be here. And I'm grateful to be a part of the team. No, and that's awesome. And it, under your leadership, I got to give a shout out to my man, Dylan Cooper. You know, he's grown the CDW portfolio of my business. I always think about how, you know, Fortinet set up is it's kind of like there's a Rubik's cube of how um, everybody looks with a different lens into the business uh, in the, and how do we go and attack instead of being in a defensive mode because we're in cybersecurity, how do we get proactive and attack? He's done uh, a lot of legwork and, and yeoman work, taking some of the healthcare specific concepts. Uh, you know, we, we've dealt, you know, been at CDW, dealt with CDW, access to 300,000 customers. I mean, I interviewed there, they were 900 million bucks and they're you know, 27, $30 billion now. I, don't, I quit counting after they went to a $5 billion quarter a couple of years ago. It's pretty amazing what the success looks like. Chris, what, how are you guiding your team to align to those solution-based outcomes and the business goals within the CDW teams there? You know, you know, I think part of it is, um, one, there's an awareness piece right now. Mm -hmm. There's so many different silos. And you know, kudos to CDW. They made a lot of strategic acquisitions. I'd say in the last five years, I mean, you and I both were, were workers there uh, when in the days of Burby, right? That was a huge splash in the market. But, you know, the last four or five acquisitions that they've made have been very strategic to security. It's opened up new silos of the business, whether it's the DevOps team, physical security team, right? Teams that traditionally we wouldn't talk to. Now we have some synergies based on all this momentum we have internally 
And, you know, my biggest thing to the team is storytelling, right? It's, we mm-hmm. can spray and pray everything that we do in 60 products and, and this, that, and the other, but what's that pain point for, to your point earlier about a healthcare customer? I mean, what, what, what are they, what keeps them up at night? What are some of the things that we can help mitigate some of that risk that they're, they're worried about, you know, and, and not really sleep in. And we have opportunity to have that storytelling. So if, if you get a, a training request in two minutes or 30 minutes or tomorrow or next week, you got to be ready. And so uh, part of my task, and I'm working with Casey and, and Glenn, my, my SE peers, is how do we take all this great stuff and condense it down into a digestible two to three second pitch? And if we can get that to a seller, they can ingest it, as you know, and I know back in our sales days there, and ingest that back out to a customer or listen for the right stuff, and then get the teams together and start talking about the overall story. And, and again, going back to you know, their cradle to grave value add. I mean, that's just a huge proponent for our customers now, and we're starting to see it. And we're, we're even seeing it on the other way. So not starting at a, a, a product pitch and out, it's, hey, my Fortinet stuff might not be working right. Can you come in and take a look? And, that's a, and then it's a health check. Then it's a, hey, there's some configurations mm-hmm. that need to be tweaked. We'll help you with that journey. So it's, it kind of works both ends of the spectrum. But back to your original question, um, it, you got to have concise storytelling right now. And, and if you're able to do that, you can bridge the reps together. You can get the story out there about why Ford and why the fabric. And now all of a sudden customers are starting to understand it. And, and we're seeing it, right? There's no shock in what we're seeing in the overall business growth with CDW and our partnership, but also as a company, I mean, just a lot of explosive growth that we've had even before I joined, you know, and you've been here longer than I have. We've just been on this great momentum run um, as an organization. So kudos to the messaging that we have out there. Yeah, and, and, you know, to align with that, now that we announced earnings, I mean, my team was at 109%. We were up 36% year over year. Really proud of what we've done. Um, CDW is, you know, every quarter, you know, growing. I'm like, Dylan, I don't know how you're doing this. So I appreciate everything that you guys are doing, taking our messaging and aligning it into their business values and then figuring out how to, you know, press those levers because uh, we're going to transition to tech right now. And, you know, I, I, I beat the drum on the same way you do. It's the fabric. It's the next-gen firewall. It's SD-WAN. It's the 53 different products underneath one umbrella. Yeah. How, when we go to them, you know, since there's so many different acquisitions and buckets, what are you, are you doing with your team from a technical end to enable CDW so that they can drive more business? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, there's a couple of pieces to it. And you, know, you always get asked why Fortinet, right? Um, I think part of it's, you know, we're 100% channel. That opens up tons of doors that, that kind of takes away some of the guard, on, I'm sure, for some of our partners in the community. But then when you look at the portfolio, right, it, it could be various silos of an organization that you're going to tap into that one, one little beachhead, you know, on the, say on the cyber side can bleed into a networking product can bleed into a physical security discussion, uh, an identity access management discussion. So it can start in one silo and help the other. And I think that's what we're starting to see within CDW is the tech is good. I mean, I, I, I make the joke, we're like, uh, we're like Apple when I talk to some of the, the younger reps, right? You look at the Apple OS in that you got an iPad, you got your iMac, you got your iPhone, right? You, you change between the two throughout your house, same experience. We got that same offering with our 40 OS, whether using an AP, a switch, a firewall, right? And I think that messaging is starting to resonate with our customers. But again, being able to take that same drill down effect with the sellers, now they understand it, right? They're able to have that same conversation. So the tech's always been good. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, kudos to, to Jim Overbeck and the marketing team that we have. Um, I feel like the, the marketing engine is just, coming on top of all the great tech that we've been doing for decades. And so now the logo's out, the fabric's out there. I mean, we're, we're at all these conferences. Um, so we're flying the flag high. And I, I think customers are starting to inquire. It's not the days of, you know, I hate to say for to, for to who, right? But you right. Know, a lot of the legacy guys will make that joke here. And it's, it's Fortinet. And, you know, we're, we're making a, a pretty strong presence in the industry right now. So now it's just making sure, going back to storytelling and awareness, making sure my CDW team, you know, the FEs, the the sellers, the field sellers, making sure they at least know what we do and what's that compelling reason why Fortinet's getting a seat at the table and why customers are, when they choose us, they're sticking with us. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the compelling uh, argument here moving forward. 
Yeah, and so part of what we when we align to what you and your team are doing, which is what makes it totally interesting to me, is we've got a we wear a lot of hats over here on the vertical teams. One of them's channel. One of them's coming up with uh, reference architectures that are you know, multi vendor solutions or Fortinet only stacks and solving those kind of problems. But you know we've got two different ways we can go with their teams. You talk about strategic acquisitions, right? So we're young enough to remember when somebody had endpoints and they had two main data center firewalls and they had a co-location facility with two firewalls. And if they bought something, it was like, we don't need to do anything for three years. It's not that way anymore. So yep. when we talk maturity with what our, um, you know, we've got the Fortinet, uh, you know, the NIST framework, let's call it. And when we talk to some of the acquisitions they've done, they've got some really, really smart people, which is what makes it cool. Is they're like, when we talk to customers, we talk, we don't talk product, we talk about maturity. We, you know, it's like product, yep. you know, ambivalent, I guess you call it. And when you don't have to choose a product, Fortinet fits in anywhere on that NIST you know, or high trust framework that you're trying to go and achieve so that you know how to, you know, you get discounts on your cyber insurance and all those things that you're running a program, not buying shiny tools. The other thing that I love with those yeah. acquisitions and some of that motion is that we fit in with, uh, you know, whether it's just product, which nobody wants to sell just product anymore. They've got service delivery. They always have had great pre-sales guys like Toy Wong. I love Toy Wong. And then they've got uh, yeah. the, the MSSP business. And then they've got the white label MSSP business too. So they're flexible with customers to be able to sell that rich experience. And sometimes we don't do something well. And you know, financial considerations, I always talk about this. It's like emotional, financial, technical considerations. And sometimes it's just not affording that answer. But that gives them the flexibility to go and drive a big outcome with that customer. So it's, 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 it's fantastic on what you and your team are doing to educate my team as well as their sellers on we're going fast and there's all these opportunities. And at the end of the day, we have solved customer problems, which gets us a, a big thumbs up. We'll go to Sizzler. So. Um, yeah. And, and probably the biggest, you know, you, you'd asked earlier too, about one of the biggest uh, inflection points, right? That acquisition of Locus, you know, I'll give a shout mm -hmm. out to Tommy Shaw and his team. I mean, they're absolute rock stars. And they've helped us just break down walls. They've, they've helped with customer issues, with obviously um, getting them back up to speed, misconfiguration stuff. But um, they've also added so many other products and services in the arsenal now, too, for CDW. So, you know, we've, we've had that pro services expansion across CDW over the last, you know, they were acquired in February. So, you, know, you think about that, acquired in February, April hits, you know, large services engagements that they're starting to work on. Um, and then now we've we've hired J.R. Riley, who's a CW badge architect. He's working on managed services. So we start to get that managed services story wrapped around it. I mean, it's, hey, Mr. Customer, here's your menu. What, what would you like? What do you need? Right? What, what, what are some of the pain points you have? And check, check, check. We can help with all of it. Where do you want us? And so it's a, it's a very compelling uh, business model right now through CDW. Yeah, it's fantastic what you and the team are doing, Chris, and, you know, love aligning when there's, a, a, a you know, an introduction, an opportunity at any state at point, at point in time. Um, we've had uh, so much success in, you know, the two years since you've been here, Dylan, Teplin, you know, all, all, that whole crew, Jim Harris, shout out to Jim Harris. He was one of the first people I met when I got here to Fortinet and driving, you know, that message and the incentives in the, what does a customer get from this? It's been fantastic. So I know one of your highlights is uh, we're going to transition to tunes because I know that's like the number one reason you wanted to be on the podcast. Since you're the guest, this is like corporate <laughs> Christmas for me, but you're the guest. You said, dude, I'm coming on. I want to talk some channel. And then I want to talk Tom Petty. Um, Chris, tell me why you love Tom Petty. Man, uh, you know, so I grew up, my dad, big classic rock guy. So any road trips we were on, it was a, it was a slew, you know, you, Pink Floyd, Bob Seger, you name it, but always kept gravitating towards Tom Petty. And once you got to see him live, I, he's one of those artists where I like his live music better than I like the radio edits. And that's, that's rare for some, you know, groups, but I've seen him 12 times. Um, wish I could see him more, you know, uh, RIP man, but, uh, he would come in and make his Midwest tour, hit the United Center, hit Milwaukee for Summerfest, go down to Noblesville, and sometimes it was a weekend. I would just make the road, and we started building friends, family. So it's funny, like we're at my parents' house, they'll throw Tom Petty radio on, and we're just sitting on the back having some beers and stuff like that. But um, the guy just was an ultimate performer, and if you get a chance to look at, he has a bunch of videos on, you know, his biography and what made him tick. I mean, uh, you won't meet a humbler musician 
with regards to getting in front of a crowd and it's not waiting until the end to thank everybody for being there like two songs in he'll just stop and like sincerely thank you guys for being here it means the world like genuinely you could feel from his heart so the humbleness of that guy but also um a lot of the stuff he changed with the music industry when they were trying to raise prices on cds and albums and the dude just put his foot down right and uh so the guy stood for uh what he believed in and you know maybe against the grain a little bit but kudos to him a lot of people benefited from it and again still had that humble you know remember where you came from and yeah, I love games, but I, I saw my bucket list now is to go to a Florida Gators game after the third quarter they play. I won't back down. The whole crowd goes wild. So you, know, you get goosebumps on the back of your neck thinking about it. But the dude was just an absolute legend. And going back to storytelling, this is where we kind of pair this stuff in. I mean, that dude was the ultimate storyteller with his lyrics, his music. And so um, that's kind of where I get that storytelling mantra from with my team is you got to be able to have something that's memorable. And that dude, you know, he'll go on forever. So uh, but yeah, I could I could speak for hours and days on this guy, man. He's just one of my favorites, all time favorite. And uh, I was blessed to be able to see him the last year of his life. Uh, my sisters actually were the ones that inspired me for it because they're like, "Hey, man, Red Rocks, Tom Petty, your birthday." Whoa. And I'm like, "Never been to Red Rocks. That was a bucket list. My birthday. How can you go wrong?" And uh, one of my favorite songs, which not probably one of his more popular ones, is "Swingin'." Yeah. And I'd been to 12 concerts at the time, never heard it. We had a rain delay and I'll call it a mist because we're from Chicago originally. I mean, it was a little, little misting at Red Rocks, pulled everyone off the seats. And so I, you call it maybe a 20 minute delay, go grab a beer and a pizza, come back down. He comes back out and he felt bad. He's like, you know, I'm sorry for the delay. It's like mother nature, dude, what are you, what are you going to do? He goes, I'm going to play a song I haven't played singing or swinging. So he plays swinging live. And there was a rainbow from the, the rain clouds that was passing through. Literally, the end of the rainbow hit the center of the stage at Red Rocks. I'll send you the picture wow. of it after we wrap up. But, dude, like, for sure. goosebump shit, right? <laughs> well, for so, sure. You're going you're gonna to uh, force me to go go into editing and make sure I put that in the B-roll. But I, I did my research on Tom Petty <laughs> just as much as I did my research on your business, Chris. You know, Tom Petty, eight <laughs> albums, six albums with the Heartbreakers, Traveling Wilburys, two albums with those with George Harrison, Bob Dylan, Roy Orbison, Jeff Lynn, uh, numerous collaborations, the most famous one with Stevie Nicks. Um, since you're the guest, I'll give you the first one. What's the first song that we tie back into your channel business with CDW? Man, uh, I'd have to go with Running Down a Dream, man. We, uh, we want to be the best. We want to be the top partner with CDW. Um, a team, kudos to my entire team. I mean, we got a, a pretty big team now. We're, we're pretty well spread out across CDW from a coverage perspective, but everybody gets up, they start running, you know, we're, we're hitting some, some crazy accolades. You know, last quarter was our biggest quarter in our partnership history, right? So teams running on all four, four cylinders, but we all have the same goal, right? We want to be number one. We're all competitive. Um, so running down a dream would have to be my number one. Well, running down a dream sounds great in a minivan or or a Corvette or anything in between. So that's why I am running down the dream. I'm going to take two. We're going to go fantasy football style. I'm going to take two. Um, okay. Breakdown, covered by the Food Fighters. I saw him live when Foo uh, was in uh, Rockingham here. Breakdown. Okay. Um, I think I think there's a, a lot of communication when we have good partnerships. There's good communications, and that'll break down. Or we could break down the competition by partnering together. That's how I took breakdown. Ooh. The second one I took okay. was a um, – I knew you'd like that one. Um, Traveling Wilburys, uh, Tweeter and the Monkey Ooh. Man. And <laughs> okay. uh, that, that was one that was uh, from way back in the day. But Tweeter and the Monkey Man, an interesting song. But, you know, it's one of those things to where this business is a little strange sometimes. Tweeter and the Monkey Man. So – I'll give it back to you, Chris. You got two here because uh, you're the big Tom Petty guy. I know you got a longer list than I do, but go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I will go with, uh, I won't back down, right? Um, mm -hmm. And for obvious reasons, right? It's, yeah, the industry is different. The, the work from, from home, the remote stuff that we're facing. I mean, the days of being a CW seller are different. The channel side's different. So, you know, every day you got new challenges that are you're confronted with and just power and throne. And I think, again, that's kind of the testament and the mindset of our team is just not backing down anything, whether it's competition, whether it's 
you know, economic stuff or whatever else is happening in the industry, just keep your head down, keep running. And uh, that's, that's what we're going to continue to do throughout the rest of the year and into next year. So it won't back down. Uh, Something Good Coming, one of the later albums, uh, very kind of mellow song. Uh, if you don't know it, check it out. But, uh, you know, we, we sat as a collective group in January and we wanted to hit over 200 million for the first time. Uh, something Good Coming, man. We're, we're, we're on pace to, to blow that number out. And uh, again, just keeping that, conc- that concise um, view of the business and making sure we're striving at something from January 1st on and mid year through we're, we're well on pace to hit there. So um, some good stuff with the partnership, but we're just getting started, man. It, it, there's, there's so much momentum to come after. Yeah. So get back over I, to you. Yeah. I'm going to take the last one and I got three that are really, um, it's going to split hairs, but I'm going to take um, into the grade wide, great wide open. Cause that's what you it kind of ties in with what you said. I think there's, so so much opportunity that we're into the gray wide open another you know great top down uh you know uh song that you know fits anywhere you know sitting on the back porch sitting at your pool at the beach on your lawnmower driving around into the gray wide open and everybody can sing along with any of these songs so that's why tom Petty's is also great because you can sing along with most of the stuff and you have some memory just like jerry Maguire. Uh, when he's driving down yep. and they're singing free falling, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I, we could talk all day on this, Chris, but you know, Tom Petty was heavily influential, uh, going back to your, uh, uh, uh won't back down. Uh, when Coop and I saw it with, with my son and Ivan, uh, shout out to my boy, Ivan, uh, on the healthcare team, the, uh, Eddie Vedder during one of the intermissions played on Tom Petty's guitar, I won't back down. So I mean, he influenced oh. so many different you know, he's a, he's a big influencer to Foo Fighters, uh, Pearl Jam, you know, they were in the same bucket fighting Ticketmaster. Um, the only time I ever watched C-SPAN, Th- those are the, you know, <laughs> he was like, uh, the, the artist, one of the artists of the people. So, you know, there's, there's, there's not too many people that say, oh, Tom Petty, I, you know, no, it was like, yeah, man. I mean, I remember being in high school, we were driving to, you know, baseball practice and listening to free ball, whatever. So yeah, nobody wants me to sing on this, but that's uh, you know, I appreciate you be like, dude. I want to talk Tom Petty. We talk Tom Petty for hours. You know, it's a generational dude. He, uh, he and you're you're spot on because I, I saw Eddie Vedder. He played just by himself. I'm going to see Pearl Jam uh, this summer, but uh, Eddie Vedder had a solo at the Chicago Theater and did a cover for Petty. It's like, dude, I get goosebumps now because obviously I'm used to seeing him almost every summer, three or four times a year. And then you know, what's that void fill? And to your point, man, he had, he impacted so many other musicians to where. That's that's his thing. Now I'll leave you with two things, and my wife would kill me if I didn't mention it. Um, my parents uh, are so big into Tom Petty, right? I mentioned they're always playing him on the back porch. My dad, for our wedding, came out to uh, "Here Comes My Girl." He loves that song from my mom. Mm-hmm. We ended up sifting through what's our our first dance song going to be. We went with "You and Me," so I'll, mm-hmm. I'll throw that one out there. It's just a beautiful, you know, melody song for for Petty. But um, yeah, dude, he, he's you know, always going to be part of my life and the way I go to market and get up in the morning and run. And oh yeah, like you said, all it takes is one of those songs to come on the radio, man, you're, you're belting it karaoke style in your car, <laughs> top totally. of your lungs. And it's, uh, it's, it's awesome to see the impact and the legacy that he's left behind. And we're hoping to do the same with our partnership with CDW. Hey, so uh, one last thing, Chris, uh, you know, I want to give everybody a call to action. I know we get, you know, mileage varies on consumption, but we have a huge contingency of fans at CDW and uh, a lot of Fortinet folks don't know the whole story behind CDW. Do you guys have an alias on your team to, for anybody to reach out to if they don't know who exactly the channel person is that covers either the segment or the geography? Yep. You can go to uh, CDW at Fortinet.com. That's our uh, team alias. Uh, or otherwise, you can come to me directly, uh, ckillcoin at fordnet.com. I'll get you in touch with our team, and uh, we'll continue to see the, the great successes together. Awesome. Well, everybody knows how to get a hold of me, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's, uh, you know, jmervis at fordnet.com. But listen, Chris, I really appreciate you being on. Hey, tell your mom, tell your friends, share it, like it, put the hammer down on the pedal of the metal. I'm glad. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Chris. Dude, thanks for having me. Have a good rest of your day, man. Have a good weekend.